So in this session, we'll be getting an insight from the other English speakers, Professor Ravinda, Professor G. S. Prasad, Dr. Ranil Kondaki, and Dr. Ravi Krishna on innovation, entrepreneurship, and opportunities in the University of Hyderabad. Professor Ravinda is an eminent Indian scientist in the field of physiological and pathological studies related to inflammation and cancer disease. He is the professor at the Department of Primary Sciences, School of Health Sciences, University of Hyderabad. And the director of newly established National School of Animal Biotechnology and Aspar. Professor T. S. Prasad is the director of Aspar and the coordinator of research and development at the University of Hyderabad. Dr. Renan Kondi is an experienced microbiologist with a demonstrated history of working in the biotechnology industry and a strong research professional. He is also the chief operating officer at, of Aspar Bank. Dr. Ramu Krishna is the Chief Executive Officer of Aspana and Technology Business Incubator at University of India. So all the participants can drop their questions in the chat box. This will be addressed by the Professor Sakhmir. Now, I would like to uh, welcome the professors to start with them. Over to you, sir. Good evening and welcome you all to this uh, Junior Science Club uh, webinar. on the innovation and entrepreneurship activity. I must congratulate the Junior Science Club for coming forward and organizing an event like this, not only for the students of University of Hyderabad, but also the students in other universities. So let me just briefly say that university, you're all aware that University of Hyderabad is one of the central universities in the country and it is uh, rated as one among the top uh, five universities in the country and uh, it was recently recognized as the institute of eminence and university of hyderabad has been recognized for its uh, excellence in teaching and research but these days um, innovation for universities, it is not just enough to excel in teaching and research. You need to excel in extension activities also, which includes the innovation and entrepreneurship activities. The innovation and entrepreneurship activities at the University of Hyderabad started with them. the first incubation center started the technology business incubation center in 2010, mainly focusing on uh, chemistry and pharma activities. Uh, and then the Tide in 2012, mainly focusing on, in, uh, on uh, information technology, IT, electronics uh, in those areas. And uh, the third incubation center in 2018 was started uh, which is the Bionest Incubation Center focusing in biology, biotechnology, healthcare. So all these incubation centers have been functioning as an independent kind of uh, uh, bodies. But in order to combine all these uh, into one unit, and so university started one academic unit, which is called as Research, Innovation, Technology, Entrepreneurship, uh, right? for which Professor G.S. Prasad is the director of that. It is an academic body of the university, which integrates all uh, innovation and entrepreneurship activities in terms of promoting academy and industry interactions, and, and also to oversee the uh, incubation centers. But under this arm, a Section 8 company was started, which is called as Aspire, Association for the Scientific Pursuits of Innovative Enterprises. This research enterprises. This Aspire is a Section 8 company. Now, once the Section 8 company came, all the three incubation centers were brought in under the folder of Aspire. And not only these incubation centers and the future incubation centers are the research parks that are going to come will be under the Section 8 company, uh, which is an independent unit 
working within the university but not directly operated or regulated by the university system. And all the three incubation centers put together, there are about 50 plus startup companies in all these areas. That is chemistry, pharma, biology, biotechnology, healthcare, IT, electronics, in all these areas. And Varshita is one of one such kind of um, uh, incubating. I must congratulate Varshita and her team for um, uh, the successfully coming up with a product and uh, uh, also getting the funding from various um, uh, other sources, not only from government, but uh, other sources also. And a number of such uh, startups with innovative products are there. And I'm sure uh, uh, Dr. Ramakrishna and uh, Dr. Anil are going to uh, tell you more about these in three incubation centers. So now I welcome uh, uh, Dr. Anil. Uh, Maybe first Dr. Ramakrishna and then... Yeah, Dr. sure. Uh, so the host should allow me to uh, present my presentation. One second, sir. Wait, wait. Yeah. Can you present now, sir? It's not coming. Sir, please try again. I think I fixed it. Okay, let me try from my side if I can present. Yeah, yeah. Or shall I send the presentation to you? Sir, if you, uh, if something problem is happening, you can send it to us, sir. We'll try to present it from our side if possible. Or you make me as an echo host, so then it will be easily I can present. Is my presentation visible? No. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we sir. are able to see that you are sharing uh, screen. It's coming. Okay. Okay. Then Ramakrishna, uh, I'll go first. Then you can join. Yeah. yeah sure. Sure. Okay. And. Uh, it will not come side by side, right? So this is uh, different uh, from Zoom. Yes, sir. We are used to use a Zoom. But anyway, I hope I, everybody can see it, right? No, it's not visible. Sir, can you see my presentation now? Sir, while sharing your screen, you can put uh, share your entire screen or uh, you can share specifically PPT. I think you are sharing only your Google Chrome. Uh, One minute. I think the entire best screen. is to uh, forward uh, your PPT to them. Prati, can you tell me your email? It's visible now. Uh, yeah, now is it visible now? Yes, 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 sir. We can see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Professor Edenagaru and uh, Anushka, for uh, introducing us. And uh, today, I'm going to uh, brief all of you about uh, Aspire Bionest, one of the three incubation centers uh, situated at uh, University of Hyderabad. I, myself, Anil Kondadi, I am an alumnus of this university. Did PhD with, uh, I mean, from a uh, School of Life Sciences. Uh, then moved to industry and almost seven years I worked at a senior level. Then I moved back to uh, promoting the entrepreneurship uh, uh, activities. So I joined in uh, uh, 
uh, Aspire Bionist uh, uh, in 2018. I just completed uh, for four years now. So Aspire Bionist uh, uh, is a window of opportunities for uh, uh, most of the uh, graduates from uh, University of Hyderabad. And uh, why? Because uh, this is a platform to support uh, 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 any innovator immaterial whether he's a student or a faculty or a non-teaching staff anybody who has an idea that will help them to uh, improve the human wellness so uh, in a biology stream we are going to support and we are supporting any innovators immaterial of their educational background so uh, coming back to the uh, organization who we are Aspire Bionist is a bioscience incubator established with a vision of creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem at University of Hyderabad and also to encourage its fraternity to become a job provider rather than a job seeker. And we are a joint program by uh, uh, DBT Government of India, BIRAC, and uh, University of Hyderabad. DBT BIRAC provided us a, a fund uh, to run the program and University of Hyderabad provided an infrastructure facility and project was uh, started uh, in 1st November 2017 and uh, our facility was ready uh, by uh, 2018, 2000, uh, 28th February 2018 and we were inaugurated by Professor G. Padmanabhan who was a renowned biochemist in India and our first incubator onboarded us on July 2018 and uh, for a matter of fact the incubator also alumnus of our university and total area under this uh, uh, program is uh, around 23,000 square footage. And these are the uh, areas we support. Basically, as per Bionist, as Professor Edena was mentioning, will support any idea from biology and life sciences. So uh, typically healthcare, biopharma, industrial biotechnology, agriculture, and any other allied areas of life sciences. You can stop me if you have any question in between. Okay. Uh, so what we offer? So we offer several uh, programs under uh, this particular Bionist and we, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the programs offered by all three incubators are similar, but we are uh, sector specific. Bionist is a life sciences incubator, GBI is a pharma chemistry and TIDE is a IT and electronics. So coming back to what Bionist offer, a pre-incubation program, so this is basically to target uh, student level innovators so who have an idea very nascent idea but they don't know how to convert into a technology so they feel that uh, the idea can be converted into a technology but they don't know how to do it so what we do is that we provide them a pre-incubation space we provide them a mentoring we provide them a, uh, the institute environment where they can convert their idea into technology so that is one part and the second part is the incubation. Incubation uh, is like we have a state of the art uh, infrastructure facility. So people who have an idea and uh, uh, a basic data is already available so that they can, they, they are confident that their data can be converted into a technology, but they don't have enough money to create their own facility. So that's where we come in. So we have a, a state of the art uh, facility where uh, any of the life sciences uh, experimentation can be handled. So they come in and we provide them in a plug and play laboratory space and access to instrumentation. So they execute their idea here using our facility uh, with a minimal investment. So once they feel that their idea is, I mean, they, they're confident about their idea and it is the product prototype is visible. So they walk out uh, to uh, manufacture their either product or prototype into their own facility. So we also provide a training and mentoring for the uh, incubators and non incubators and students also. Like we do offer several training and mentoring programs. Uh, we, so far we have been, we have conducted more than 40 training programs and we do uh, provide mentoring services to incubating startups. And we do provide a, a networking facilities. Like when a startup is incubated here, initially they will start working with their pocket money, friends and family money but uh, sometimes it would not be sufficient to run the show. So that's where we pitch in and uh, we bring in investors in the form of venture, venture capitalists and uh, angel investors and government grants and other things. So we network with them so that they can uh, discuss their idea with the people. So if uh, both are interested, the people can invest into their idea so that that idea can be taken into the next round. So we also groom our startups and in, uh, alumni 
to get the grants so far we have uh, been successful and uh, at least 13 of our alumni and startups have have received uh, government grants uh, which is uh, close to 7 crores so we have supported uh, nearly uh, from only the bionist program we have supported uh, uh, nearly 50 startups of which at least uh, uh, 15 have been graduated to the next level so so the infrastructure what we have is like uh, as i mentioned in the earlier slide we have a 23000 square foot is state of the art plug and play incubator space and we have divided that into different size laboratory suits because every startup want to have their own facility and based on the number of people working they pick uh, any of the size laboratory between 300 to 500 square footage and uh, uh, we have a 12 type a suits 12 type b suits and uh, six type c suits total uh, uh, 30 number of uh, laboratories and we also have a 12 share co-working space lots which is uh, amounting 2000 square footage but this is as i was mentioning in the earlier slide so this is basically to target a pre-incubation level innovators so they have an idea but uh, they don't have any uh, basic data to confirm whether they, their idea is uh, feasible and uh, uh, doable or not so for such a case so they will take this co-working space lot they do a, a small here and there research then they once they're confident they can move into the laboratories so we have a common facility spread across more than 5000 square foot and uh, our facility ha has an ample circulation area and uh, connected with uh, office space meeting space and boardrooms and we have a biggest and one of the beautiful uh, uh, networking area which is uh, around this 5000 square footage uh, site and which can host at least 100 to 120 people uh, for any uh, networking event which is also connected with the audio and video so these are the representative images of uh, uh, our facility you can see thank you this, uh, sorry Sunil, uh, mute yourself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So uh, these are the representative images of the facility. These are the type A, type B, type C lab suits, and this is the co-working lab. And we this uh, where you can see this uh, ample circulated area uh, in the Bionist uh, entrance. And this is the aerial view. We are situated in the third floor of School of Life Sciences building. And this is the corridor view. And this is the networking area I was talking about. And from the networking area, you can be all the, uh, the forest green you can see is the only university. And the beautiful area where you can watch all the deer and peacocks coming in. And we do have a BSL-2 facility that, uh, I mean, to handle uh, sensitive uh, uh, material, something like pathogenic material related to mycobacterium tuberculosis or even a COVID for that matter. So these are the representative images of a boardroom and a net house for conducting a botanical experimentation. This is a utility area where all the laboratory glassware and uh, uh, utensils are cleaned and autoclaved here. So generally, Aspire Bionist is a platform that helps innovators to translate their life science ideas into technologies. So coming to our facility, what kind of facilities do we have for a uh, innovators. So our facility can support complete upstream and downstream processing of biotechnology related products and we have a dedicated animal and microbial cell culture facilities and BSL2 facility and a net house for uh, uh, botanical experiments and cold storage and utility area and our facility is fit with biometric access and all the startup uh, employees can access the facility 24-7 using their biometric uh, uh, credentials and uh, being an incubator and part of the University of Hyderabad, you will be given uh, access to uh, digital library of University of Hyderabad. And uh, as I was mentioning, we have a, the largest networking area that is connected with audio visual. And our floor is uh, enabled with uh, Wi-Fi, 24-7 Wi-Fi, surveillance cameras, fire alarms, and uh, independent of university system. We have a separate control of all these things. So these are some of the representative images uh, for the facility. So benchmarking, so far we have been there for uh, near about four years and uh, what is our credential so far? So we have been regarded as the best emerging bio incubator in the country uh, for the year 2021 by BIRAC, that is a government of India division. And we have received two rounds of grant from BIRAC 
and our facility is recognized by DSR and we have, uh, this is DSR, uh, I'm sure most of you know what is DSR, Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. So the approval of DSR enables you to uh, claim tax exemptions and when you are importing and exporting, so you, you can avail tax exemptions and also this DSR certification enables you to apply for several government grants. And we do have IBSC Institutional Biosafety uh, Committee, so to approve biotechnology related projects. And we are a BIG associate partner. BIG stands for Biotech Ignition Grant, a, a flagship program by BIRAC to support the innovators, early stage innovators uh, uh, to uh, conduct their research. And uh, this includes a, a 50 lakh rupee of a government grant and for a period of 18 months. Being a big associate partner, we can handhold all the applicants in the application process. And once they receive a grant, we can incubate them into our incubation center and support them to complete their process. And our uh, uh, startups have filed more than 10 patents and received 11 grants. And they have developed more than 10 products. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as per Bionist alone, created more than 200 jobs and 250 internships have been provided out of which at least 20-25% is from University of Hyderabad. So now I'm going to talk a few words about some of the incubating startups. So first one is, uh, it is Algen Biotech Private Limited, so which is promoted by Dr. Cherish Prabhu, who has a, a experience in the industry. So uh, almost like 20-25 years, he served the industry in a different roles, including a, a vice president in uh, Bharat Biotech. So then he, he came to us, he started his own lab. So main work of his uh, group is uh, uh, production and purification of a strongest known antioxidant from uh, algae. That is nothing but uh, aspazante. This is a red color pigment, uh, a strongest ever known antioxidant. So what they do, they, they have developed a technology using our facility to produce this aspazanthin uh, using a very inexpensive uh, growth medium. So they have confirmed that uh, this can be produced uh, at a scale of uh, 10,000 liters. Now their uh, trials are going on in association with uh, Pankatadri poultry. So now they, this uh, initially they thought they can use this pigment for a human wellness. And now uh, because human wellness uh, product uh, requires a, a lot of regulatory approvals. And that takes a lot of time as well as money. So uh, as a low hanging fruit, they have associated with the Venkatadri poultry. So uh, as uh, maybe many of you aware, so the egg color decides the market of the egg. The premiumness is the egg color. Uh, so the more orange, uh, yellowish color will give you a premium cost. So it is known that, I mean, this group uh, in association with uh, Venkatadri poultry realized that uh, feeding astaxanthin uh, to the poultry uh, uh, can end, uh, uh, I mean, it can accumulate in the egg yellow and uh, uh, further it can yield a better premium price. So now they are uh, doing a pilot scale studies uh, uh, using a large scale of poultry. So uh, looks like uh, uh, their process is successful and they joined us uh, in uh, March 2019 and uh, a small video of their startup. Anil, you could uh, you can uh, skip yes, all these things. Maybe in another two, three minutes, you should. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I think I have only one more slide. The second one is uh, Reagent Biosciences. Uh, this is also uh, 
uh, established by one of our alumnus, Professor Dr. Uday Saxena, who is also co-inventor of uh, Lipitor, only potent drug so far for uh, lowering the uh, cholesterol. So uh, they are working on a 3D printed tissues for research. Uh, generally in the pharmaceutical research, whenever a drug molecule is identified, it has to be tested on animals first uh, before being tested on the human beings to make sure that uh, uh, the drug molecule is safe. So uh, because of a lot of restrictions, uh, use of animals laboratory has, uh, uh, animals has been restricted so much. So what they are doing is that they have uh, created a platform to use a 3D printer to print several tissues of uh, human origin and uh, any drug molecule can be uh, used on this 3D printed tissues and it will give a similar results to that of animals. So that it, you can reduce the use of uh, number of animals. Once you have a preliminary data, that data can be then verified on uh, animals. Instead of 1000 animals, you can finish your job using 10 animals. So the third, one is a 30M genomics, and this uh, uh, an interesting story for this particular startup. So this is started by one of the professor and two of his students from Avignon University, Edmundpur, and his name is Dr. Bennett Das, and they started their journey in 2019. Initially, they started their journey uh, uh, for a small tool, so which decides how much of drug is required to be given to any patient based on the patient genetics. So whenever you go to a medical shop, uh, there is a standard dose of a, a medicine like a 10 mg, 20 mg, 100 mg, 200 mg. But patients do not require that much of dose, either it is under uh, dosed or overdosed. So there are some genetic tools so which can precisely decide how much of a uh, drug uh, required to particular patient. So they developed a handy tool to analyze based on the genetics, this uh, how much of a drug required to be dosed to a particular patient for a particular element. And further, they expanded their research to uh, consumables, consumables of uh, molecular biology example. So they developed a small cocktail of uh, uh, reaction mixture that can extract your uh, PCR ready DNA within 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds. And uh, rec their recent venture is they have developed a laboratory PCR. Generally, a PCR machine is nothing but a polymerase chain reaction machine. So thermal cycler, that would cost you anywhere between three to four lakh, the basic version. So, the, so because of its expensiveness, many of the students and uh, government colleges and uh, uh, cornered private colleges could not afford it. So they came up with a very inexpensive 3D printed PCR machine that is only costing you uh, around 20,000 rupees. And this is a, a small video about their innovation. So voice is not coming. It's coming, sir. Okay, that's all. Uh, this is the team Bionest. Now, maybe a couple of quick, quick questions. Maybe after the presentation of um, Ramakrishna's. Anything is fine, sir. Ramakrishna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to. Uh... 
but you already have shared with them, no? No, sir. Why? Share a tab. Uh, Anil, what is this? <clears throat> so share your entire screen, the first one. Okay, entire screen. Okay. Yeah. Now you maximize your presentation. Go. You will not be visible there. Only your presentation is visible. Is it uh, visible now? Yeah, it's loading. Is it yes. visible now? Yes. Okay. Now you can maximize and go into the presentation mode. Yeah. Thank you. So good evening. And I hope everyone is doing well at, the, at this pandemic uh, uh, situation. So uh, as now, uh, just now, uh, Dr. Anil highlighted the activities of Bionest at university. Today, I want to give some insights about what is actually startup means and how our, the university ecosystem are even in India. So how it evolved and now it is performing. So we all know startup is a very trendiest word nowadays. Uh, so how it generally, I mean, we can define the startup. So startup is a legal enterprise. So, I mean, uh, initiated by a few individuals. So to lead the entrepreneurial activities and, the, and the, uh, which is in the early stages, basically from idea to product development to a product or process or services, anything. So typically a startup aims to meet the marketplace need by developing or offering an innovative product or process or any kind of services. So how to do these kind of innovative process for any new, I mean, so any uh, newcomer or any student or whomever it may, it may be. So first we need to observe ourselves, the, the, the entire world. So, and find out what is happening around us. So find out a problem and then go and discuss, or uh, ask yourself about uh, the problem and how to find out a solution for that. So from that, we need to know and to develop few skills and knowledge so to for solving this problem and to create a new product or a process or uh, uh, any solution for that. So finally, you need to revise the, that innovative idea through practical application and reverse as if it is required to uh, do the back reverse engineering also. So the key drivers for any successful startup is basically starts with an innovative idea and uh, so it should have a it should have the management skills or a team uh, our ability to go on to penetrate into the markets these are the basic things which a startup requires to excel their abilities so positive attitude positive thinking for any innovator is always a very key uh, uh, <clears throat> very key uh, for to uh, have to achieve the success and the second more the, the next important thing is the pragmatism levels so many of the people will fail so ideas will be good but they don't know how to really implement that one to the next level so we need to think about the pragmatism where the practicalities of i mean can we do it or not so this is much more required for any kind of startup and timelines so timelines within stipulated time, so deliverables should be done by the startup. So this is the uh, one more uh, quality should be there. And the niche products, the quality of the product should not be compromised at any point of time. And patents, so whatever the ideas, that's the IP is the much more important for any upcoming startups. So generally startups have challenges, various kinds of cha challenges. So for uh, the basic thing is the funding. So everyone will have some ideas so and how to implement that one. But they need some kind of basic funding, some seed fund to kickstart their activities. And other resources like infrastructure, uh, any mentoring services, these kind of things. And market, access to the market and capital intensity and technology. So adopting new technologies or adopting innovative processes uh these are the basic and major challenges for startups 
if you see the indian i mean uh, the current scenario of the startups india is the third largest startup ecosystem the present year so we have seen nearly 40000 startups active startups currently working in india and uh, we are the largest uh, uh, fifth largest fda recipient in the world in the for this financial year uh, every time we are seeing a 2x growth uh, from year to year so basically the activities as i mean started in the uh, early uh, tens but now we are seeing the maximum growth every year 2x uh, there is an increase is there and most of the i mean investments are going into drugs and pharmaceuticals in the present year so in next three years we are i mean india may reach the top three positions in receiving the foreign uh, direct investments so we are seeing a uh, different kinds of startups so working in different different sectors so the startup will be i mean the nature of the startup will be for a certain period only so once if they reach to the next level that is scale up process or production levels are directly going into the markets so then i mean attracting big size markets then we term it that that startup or that company as an unicorn so in the present year india has raised nearly 43 unicorns i mean these startups has become the unicorns so in 2019 i mean nine startups now it has reached to 43 startups so now we can see the clear the growth curve of uh, how the startup ecosystem is evolving in india so most of these unicorns are in the finance sector only and uh, so as we from university of hyderabad which is i mean uh, so multidisciplinary in uh, especially research based university most of the startups are i mean as i said uh, so they are aiming in the different different sectors so, but technology based i mean startups has always uh, i mean making an, a bigger impact in the society so what is deep tech innovation sir uh, uh, i mean we can define it as an as a, the startups which basically works on uh, some scientific discovery or uh, some innovative engineering processes it may ranges from the healthcare to new materials aeronautics industries i mean each and every sector including nutrition everything so basically these deep tech innovations are deep tech innovative based startups are multidisciplinary in nature so they adopt very <coughs> various technologies from different different resources and the the basic that and the fundamental feature for this deep tech uh, startups are it has a very longer gestation period generally in earlier days it is nearly it is taking too long time like 20 years now it is reduced because the advancement of uh, technologies and the adoption of the same so <clears throat> what is happening here in this deep tech innovation is innovation it is the major game changer for these startups so how to do this uh, deep tech uh, into the reality is the, so ideation from ideation then you need to validate your uh, i mean so from step by step process ideation concepting committing validating scaling and establishing of the new i mean uh, uh, the uh, enterprises so and that process will do in i mean in two i mean we can categorize in two forms that is one is incubation and one is acceleration incubation generally startups now as anil already told about the incubation center so incubation centers are i mean the centers which provide some plug and play environment for startups who comes with an, an idea and we will provide some plug and play environment and they can validate their ideas and they can make some commercial prototype and they can move to the acceleration phases where uh, going to the market uh, and market penetration and market expansion or uh, expanding their startups so, so the major issues generally we will find uh, with startups is in the acceleration phase so how to go penetrate to the markets and how to uh, i mean reach the customers so majority of the startups will die at this phase so generally we will call it as a valley of death so these are the some highlights how the global i mean uh, so us is leading uh, in i mean uh, uh, in raising the deep tech startups uh, and i mean many followed by china and followed by other uh, uh, asian countries also. so if you see some uh, these are the, some technology based uh, i mean uh, successful startups like spacex we all know about it elon musk 
and some other uh, i mean financial uh, uh, startups like paytm ui park byzo so these are indian uh, uh, startups basically and which is unicorn in nature now so the indian ecosystem basically uh, uh, currently it has 43 tech unicorns today which is a third highest number of unicorns in the world and we have the third largest startup ecosystem in the i mean in, in the world uh, as of now so bangalore delhi hyderabad and other uh, uh, i mean uh, metro cities are uh, becoming prominent places for startups because the uh, i mean established ecosystem uh, to nurture the startups so <clears throat> the maximum way we are observing currently the indian ecosystem is in the uh, fintech uh, financial technology uh, fin uh, 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 financial sectors and uh, we are expecting 100 plus unicorns by the end of 25 so and uh, tech i mean uh, so this is very uh, i mean old data so in the year of 2019 uh, so the next 10 promising startups were published by silicon india a magazine so i'm proud to say that if you see a black uh, logo manjira digital systems uh, a startup uh, uh, i mean started by professor venu so our ex faculty here in the school of physics so this startup is working on uh, multimedia accelerator systems which uh, helps in i mean uh, improve the high performance capacity of electronics so and he he is in the customer acquisition phase his first customer is isro second customer is intel maybe uh, qualcomm and amazon are in pipeline right now so can india will really be a manufacturer hub for future means yes because uh, adoption of new industrial policy or a declaration of uh, new policies by government of india uh, establishment of industrial clusters sages and uh, very attractive tax incentives and uh, finally incubators and accelerators so currently india has nearly 600 plus incubation centers majority of these incubation centers are, are with uh, academic organizations the reason is to promote or at the initial stage itself i mean from the students so instead of being as an, a job seeker they should be like an you know, job creators so that is the major reason so why they established at the uh, i mean at academic organizations so the advantage is uh, i mean if we start uh, an enterprise uh, at this moment in india so because we are the second largest populated country we know all that so but uh, we are in economics wise or in market size wise we are the sixth largest consumer market and maybe uh, we may grow a uh, third largest by 2030 and we have a, as i said the second uh, largest populated with uh, young workforce uh, uh, i mean nearly 50% younger generation young people whose age below 30 are there available so so far we have raised nearly i mean our startups has raised nearly 82 billion investments in this present financial year so we have a diversity of resources uh, and uh, well connectivity and supply chain management uh, is there in india currently so for funding opportunities so how startups can get avail uh, funds from various uh, i mean sources are there. what are the sources available sources at this moment so we can categorize this funding into three categories like uh, government funding private funding and various other sources uh, so if you see the government agencies in the present situation so each and every government sector in uh, i mean with government of india is offering directly or indirectly or supporting startup culture or, uh, i mean enabling startup ecosystem in india so the very first uh, agency established to nurture these kind of activities is uh, Uh, nstedb from uh, by department of science and technology they have various kinds of programs so nidi prayas nidi uh, entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneur in residence programs so these are specifically mentioned for uh, the i mean the young people or the early stage startups who are at the ideation stage to develop some uh, prototype or to test their or validate their prototype these, these kind of things so followed by birak department of biotechnology and mighty department of electronics and information technology so these are the i mean the uh, msme is there atal innovation mi uh, mission is there tech outreach program so each and every department was now they are increasing startups in india so once the ideation stage is over then we need to see the scaling up phases 
so even that also is supported by uh, all these ministries basically and specifically uh, department of science and technology through its uh, technology development board so after this i mean government funding agencies so you can see the private funding so the angel investors so basically these angel investors are at the idea they will support uh, by taking some equity at the ideation stage itself so, so the known angel investors uh, the like indian angel network hyderabad angels mumbai angels so now each and every metro city has their own a kind of networks uh, uh, for this uh, angel investors and next is venture capitalist so angel invest investments is always for an, a short and limited period only i mean for short term goals so venture capitalist when it comes to the venture capitalist so a big quantum of uh, investments will be done by the is venture capitalist uh, for uh, with for the long term goals so various venture capitalists this i'm just highlighting only few here but uh, if you can google so i mean nearly 200 to 300 uh, venture capitalists will be observed in each and every city so these are few venture capitalists and other sources like crowdfunding so crowdfunding is uh, suppose if you uh, remember a few years back i think so one or two films was uh, i mean uh, uh, they created those movies uh, using crowdfunding so we don't know who is going to fund but you can if you advertise so what is your requirement so a small small amounts will come as an investment to your firm so this is one kind of funding sources available so and bank loans so majority of the banks each and every bank now they are i mean supporting business especially startups uh, and uh, anyhow incubation centers has their own uh, i mean uh, uh, incubation seed fund uh, support schemes for uh, to nurture the startups so, so other than this some uh, non banking financial corporations are also there so which are supporting the startup so what is the ecosystem i will i mean at the, uh, i mean at university is already explained by professor redanasar and uh, dr anil so as you all know that aspire so university has created this section 8 company to do i mean to nurture and to promote a uh, uh, startup ecosystem on the campus so our vision is to create inclusive and enabling ecosystem for innovative knowledge based enterprises and our mission is to enhance and deepen the incubation activities and knowledge enterprise initiatives at university of hyderabad so under these uh, activities we have as uh, uh, dr anil has explained so we have pre incubation program faculty enterprise team and seed fund assistance and networking uh, facilities there so we have pre incubation centers at uh, uh, under this program as by tbi technology business incubator tied uh, for it and electronics which is established in 2013 so we have some uh, seed fund assistance program under the uh, this tight program uh, so far we have supported four startups under this uh, uh, scheme so two startups uh, uh, i mean graduated so among which uh, two students from uh, school of computer sciences well, they have taken the seed fund so and finally as by bionest so you just now as we already seen the bionest uh, uh, from uh, uh, dr ranil so this is the infrastructure under uh, uh, at the incubation centers and aspire so nearly 50000 plus spaces uh, plug and play spaces available for startups uh, and where the capacity to incubate more than 50 plus uh, startups are there uh, and uh, some seed fund assistance program is available with tide so as anil mentioned already about mentorship networking uh, so and uh, uh, access to the university resources and uh, majorly two i mean we are categorizing these activities in two forms one is pre incubation so this is for early stage uh, i mean at ideation stage so any individual innovator they can come and they can test their ideas so we will provide some uh, plug and play environment or individual workbench space for them and we will give some uh, uh, training for the i mean the students to uh, how to uh, further do their activities uh, and how to make some business plan out of it also. and when coming to the incubation so we have some technical mentoring so we have some dedicated incubation spaces and uh, we have i mean they have access to have some networking also so this is uh, some uh, representative images uh, 
of infrastructure facilities available at uh, TBI. So TBI majorly focuses on uh, uh, chemistry, uh, pharma, and renewable energy, and even uh, new materials. So we have all the plug and play environment over there for uh, startups. So this is Bionest, as already Anil has explained about this one. So I don't want to, uh, I will skip this slide. And this is Tide. Uh, so currently located at uh, uh, Science Complex. So, so th we have some 3D uh, printer here, a four nozzle system, and we have a PCB milling machine, and we have other testing and uh, measurement tools also. Uh, so, and we have some co-working space also available over there. So this is all about uh, 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 the ecosystem available at the University of Hyderabad. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was very insightful and uh, surely as you mentioned uh, the number of unicorns in our country has been growing really well and it's yeah. been already in uh, every kind of news and it's a wonderful thing and uh, i would like to uh, ask uh, audience if they have any questions they can put in and if you want you can even unmute yourself and ask so i request i mean maybe students if people are there uh, i mean are, if you are offline uh, i mean outstations Maybe once if every uh, thing is resumed, so we'll invite you all so to visit our facilities and you can interact with our startups. So regularly we are conducting some kind of activities over there for the benefit of startups and that can be uh, utilized by, I mean, students also. Okay, so next, uh, Viva Life. So Vimal and Varshita. So I think I remember. Uh, I think two years back in the I mean COVID time only. I think uh, so. I got a call one day uh, from Varshita. I think so. They are looking for some space, and so then I asked. So what you are doing? So just I completed uh, BSc uh, and I started. So I'm not very. I mean positive for her basically at that time so she is only undergraduate student so i don't know so how they are really uh, really interested to take up this challenge so then uh, again i got a call from kongu engineering college so where they pitched their idea and they got some funding over there. then i realized okay so i think these people are really serious uh, in taking up the activity then i called them so they visited the place and I initially I told that, so what kind of facilities you are looking for? So they said that they want to develop some prototype and to test and validate their prototype. So whatever the facilities we have, so we shown them and they said that this is enough for them. So like that, so they started here and within uh, uh, maybe in 12 months of time. So we have seen very clear cut growth phase for this startup. So we are really happy for them and we wish them to continue this success forever. Uh, and now, uh, Varshita and Vimal, so you can explain your uh, experience and what is the thought behind in starting the uh, startup so, and how you reach it to this level. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so before we begin, I think uh, you had a question from one of our participants. Uh, so I just uh, yeah. read it out for you, sir. Yeah, uh, Mihir asks, how can computer science IM Tech uh, students contribute in this club? I think, uh, Mihir, is your uh, club, what, when you mean club, do you mean JSE or in general do you mean about uh, uh, these uh, incubators? I mean, uh, I mean JSE only. Okay, that uh, will answer you differently. But if you have anything related to this incubators or uh, anything specifically about startup ecosystem around that, maybe you can ask. And uh, yeah, like uh, uh, in startups, how can computer science students do it? See, uh, if you have an idea, so in making some kind of uh, uh, a product, or if you want to develop a new or innovative uh, process or software or whatever. So if you have any such kind of idea, so and if you want to commercialize it, not to just to make some publication out of it and I mean to publish uh, in a good journal kind of not not such kind of. Thing. If you want really to take that uh, I mean uh, product to the uh, I mean market level, then you need to start some kind of company, I mean, either private limited or LLP or proprietary based kind of thing. So these kind of. Thing. So for that, 
we are providing some kind of guidance as well as a plug and play environment for you people so that's the nature of uh, incubation center at university okay okay sir i understand okay. and uh, subhasmita she also raised her hand uh, do you have any question okay uh, sir i had one question for you that you hmm. mentioned about internships around 250 something around that right so internships with startups or is it like uh, in general with aspire how is it about no with yeah. startups only okay like uh, summer internships where students can see uh, the students uh, they have a specific interest so uh, if they come to us we will assign to the uh, appropriate startup uh, in either of the incubation center we have three incubation centers if they have some uh, interest in life sciences uh, related stuff we will incubate them i mean we will refer to the startups being incubated in bionest and if it is it electronics we refer to the startups uh, uh, from our type it is something like that and we keep getting the request not only from the university but uh, all over the country people do come here for uh, the, uh, the internship uh, ranging anywhere between 3 to 6 months and most of the time the advantage is if they are into their final semester uh, uh, they come for a curriculum project once they are done and start up watch them very closely and if they feel that this particular person is very uh, like productive and very interesting and knowledgeable so they will pick him as a employee itself so the employment opportunity sits next to you there when you are being uh, uh, like uh, you are an intern there so it is a win win situation for both of them yes sir yeah. and uh, anyone from audience do you have any questions if not then uh, i'll be moving ahead with the interview with our founders of viva life so vimal and varshita so introduce yourself and then uh, people can ask you uh, some questions sir i also have a question ready so after them introducing yeah, I, themselves if they are so we'll ask them really we really, really made some good questions so i want to ask <laughs> i think pratik is well prepared with a sh- yes, bullets yes, yes. <laughs> exactly so, uh, sir he is doing his uh, pre- <laughs> Yeah. Are really excited to do this. Yeah. So I think uh, yeah, you guys can introduce yourself. Thank you, Pratik, and uh, thank you, JC and Adar for providing this opportunity to us. And uh, it's a great opportunity for us to uh, share our thoughts, what have been uh, our journey, our experience with Shark Tank before Shark Tank we started. With the close to community of our U.S. campus and U.S. community, uh, we are literally privileged uh, to be on that platform. And uh, so, my so introduce myself. I'm uh, Vimal Kumar. I'm an electrical electronics graduate, 2018 passed out. And after that, I was working at Robert Bosch, and later I was working in a startup accelerator. I was working for Ministry of Defence and MHR for uh, Open Innovation Program. I have been working there for two years, and uh, during one such program uh, conducted by MHR, something called Smart India Hackathon, and in the hardware edition, I was the model co- uh, coordinator in Coimbatore, where Vasita, uh, that's where I met, and she was a finalist there. So she was one of the top uh, 18 finalists which came to Coimbatore, and she was one of it. And that's when we started interacting, uh, and a uh, very unique person among the entire crowd. And during that five day, twenty four by seven hackathon, that's when I understood that she has a disorder called diabetes, and that's how everything started. So more than I telling it, uh, Vasita will take uh, you through the journey, so that uh, then I'll come back. Over to you, Vasita. Sure, definitely. So I'm Dhur Vasita, and I'm biotechnology graduate, twenty twenty passed out. Uh, to tell about myself, I was never been a good student in the class. i used to bunk the classes and i used to attend conferences i'm more uh, you know interested on problem solving rather than sitting in the class and listening to classes uh, but postscript not advice to bunk your classes so this is what i used to do i used to pick different problems i used to solve them i was interested in entrepreneurship uh, but i never thought that i wanted to build product like this but at some point of time after participating in this all these hackathons meeting lot of people and uh, getting not lot of knowledge from different experts from different domains i thought of like why can't we solve our problem first 
am inborn diabetic which means i have been diagnosed with diabetes since my birth so uh, i have pa- faced very pro- problematic with the existing you know finger pricking techniques especially the regarding the pain cost and uh, the repeated expenses and grabbing lot of attention for example did we lost her did we lose her i think so uh-huh. yeah so i think uh, uh, she has submitted the decision so i think uh, for her. so she has been uh, going to all the trauma where uh, she, uh, she has to prick uh, in a public place for example she has to do that uh, finger pricking uh, to check her, uh, check her glucose level because she is completely dependent on the uh, insulin she has to take a four times an insulin so that was the journey of her so uh, during the hackathon and after the hackathon she approached me like and said like uh, this is what i am facing and uh, i want to build a solution so that without pricking i want to measure my glucose and she came up with certain uh, solutions which uh, she needed my support in converting those into reliable products as a compact usable products that can be consumed by the user so she approached me and uh, it was i would say it was exactly in the month of 2019 uh, october when she approached me and said that uh, shall we start this but it was uh, pre corona uh, to be uh, 2019 pre corona so she said okay let's see and how we can take this forward and by february so we almost like uh, october november december jan feb march almost like five years uh, so five months uh, we have been testing out uh, talking to different diabetic patients doctors diabet- uh, diabetologists pharmacists uh, even medical distributors to understand why there wasn't any other product similar to a non invasive product which has come into a market though we have too much of technology being advanced science being advanced but still we do not have such a product in the market later we came to know uh, due to business reasons of uh, certain companies so they do not want to release and moreover the technology wasn't feasible yet to get a non feasible non invasive uh, device into the market so later what we did okay so we decided uh, let's start it and eventually uh, we had our lockdown in march of 2020 and uh, unfortunately we have to shut our doors and stay indoors in our home but i would say uh, for this lockdown has literally favored us because we were in, inside our home we didn't travel we saved a lot of time so we almost put forth a certain amount of uh, hours in each day working on this trying to solve it so i mean like i understand that lockdown was very bad and very uh, serious for certain people but uh, in perspective of us uh, we had a better opportunity to try it out test it out and build a prototype so after that uh, we started uh, pitching in for grants so as a student so i though i have a two and a half years experience in that and barsita was just uh, passed out of 2020 uh, the first thing that every startup would need is access to funding and grants because no matter we have big big ideas big big uh, solutions we need some funding support uh, to convert this idea into a product so that's when uh, we have so that's something called nidhi prayas uh, which is a grant which is provided by department of science and technology it is a, a funding up to 10 lakhs which uh, helps you in supporting you in converting your idea into a prototype prototype model prototype we call it as mvp minimum viable product so we pitched in almost like uh, 16 uh, centers for nidhi prayas in that uh, we got shortlisted for 10 for the first round and 8 and finally three centers agreed to pro- uh, i mean uh, finally we got three centers who were very willing and uh, who has sanctioned us uh, funding uh, in that uh, kongu tbi uh, which is based out of hero tamil nadu uh, which we took up the grant and we started our work so we got a grant in november and got it uh, credited in our account on december 1st and the first immediate thing that we did was uh, talking to ramakrishnan sir at the us type and uh, we said that uh, we want to relocate to hyderabad because hyderabad uh, if you look at different cities across india hyderabad is one good ecosystem and a playground as i would say for medical sector pharma and licenses and biopharma 
if you take us chennai and our oh, sure it would be like automobiles industry bangalore for services apps and softwares uh, mumbai and delhi for fintech so it's like uh, clustered like that and we want to play in a better pitch as cricketers would uh, relate to it we want a better playground a better pitch to play and that's why we want to relocate to hyderabad and uh, we're so thankful to ramakrishnan sir for uh, accepting our proposal and uh, we chose he, he sent us the photos and uh, because it was locked down in december of 2020 uh, he sent us photos and saw, uh, told us that this is what uh, the facility we have and is it okay fine we said we are really okay with it and this is what we want because we were looking for a facility where we have both uh, a, access to professors mentors experts which university of hyderabad really really has and also we want other facility where we can experiment on electronics prototyping 3d printing and all these facilities that are available in uh, aspect type so no other uh, talks are we said we are really happy with what the facility with you urge and we want to relocate so immediately we uh, book our tickets we moved to uh, hyderabad on december 3 and december 4th of 2020 i can still remember it was on a saturday we were university of hyderabad inside the site uh, looking to the facility amrutishna was picked up us the gate and uh, took us to the entire facility they were so happy with it and that's when we started and uh, it was a to be honest it was a roller coaster ride because uh, i come from engineering background vashita comes from a bsc biotech background and uh, we have been uh, learning and learning again learning doing mistakes learning from those mistakes and that has been our entire journey for the one year exact i mean one year and one month right now and uh, so what we did was like uh, so we started testing out we started uh, building a poc we started uh, then scaling up to a bigger poc a beta version of it then we started uh, testing out with ourselves we started putting our fingers and compare what is the accuracy and we had a support of professors and uh, experts within the university who assessed us who gave us inputs who gave us insights and uh, it was a great opportunity and uh, i would say we are literally blessed to be within the uh, community with the access to all these mentors and facilities i think uh, that was a, i would say this is it is the best decision that we have made to get inside uh and uh, set up our incubation team and later we won a hackathon when we registered our company got it uh, got our technology patent published and uh, after that uh, varshita represented at hyderabad uh, i mean she won the tai so there's something a uh, association a like organization called the indus entrepreneurs tai it's called in short abbreviation it's called tai and tai hyderabad so varshita won the uh, tai women global pitch competition and she represented hyderabad at the dubai in the global level finals at uh, gitex technology week and later we also won the second runner up of uh, india finals in india for the same competition and uh, so during our lockdown uh, shark tank was one binge watch thing we are literally little little so i would say uh, free guys for shark tank because shark tank especially shark tank us where kevin uh, obsessed with numbers and uh, lorry's branding and mark cuban's way of uh, looking at products i mean we took shark tank as one of the platform where we were putting our ideas into testing and getting our those questions solved to our everyday uh, thing so every day we would binge watch certain episodes learn from that and we will assess it to ourselves so that's how we started but when we came to know that shark tank uh, india is coming uh, and it's being by sony tv it's first time coming to india we got this notification in the month of june 21st that's when the, it started we were super excited but we knew that we were too early because we were in the testing phase of the product and we are yet to launch the product yeah hi vashita back again so we are testing phase of the product and uh, in that situation but still we didn't want to miss out the opportunity of shark tank so we applied to shark tank and uh, it was a bigger application oh my god i mean uh, we took two days right two or three days vashita to complete the it took us three and a half day exactly yeah it we was are, like 31 think, page application so yeah it was only 31 pages application that we filled out then uh, they uh, reverted back asking us for a video pitch then we presented a, we recorded a video uh, that so many takes those two parts are 
uh, your video pitch was the one which they recently posted right you both were standing no, together no, and no uh, that no, no, no that was on the show actually uh, the Absolutely. one more there was uh, two more rounds which we gone to one yeah. uh, um, one was the video pitch we have sent to them and uh, another one was the audition pitch they have recorded for themselves which so we, we attended it in bangalore like, like uh, in the month of august still will be remember uh, on august uh, exactly on the onam day uh, they called us and like in four days you have to come to bangalore for the auditions and we were like seriously we are all shark tank and we are going for auditions and we were literally shocked and exactly i can remember we were at malabar uh, uh, kitchen having our own am sadhya exactly that's when we were having a food and we are having a call and it was like a uh, surprising moment for us and after that uh, we immediately booked our tickets flew to bangalore and we were for audition it was almost uh, 45 minutes to one hour audition and it was almost like uh, 9 10:30 right yeah 9:30 yeah 10:30 yeah so it was that time uh, overnight and we were pitching to them and uh, it was a great experience doing the auditions and i like like in 15 days we they got back and said us like uh, are you available in the month of uh, october to december for the shoot and they, they said yeah we are uh, ready for that and uh, did we we asked like uh, are we selected they said no you are not selected yet but we are just confirming the dates from the uh, party spends and that's it uh, hang up in a couple of days again they called up and said uh, you have been selected for the finals of uh, final shoot of shark tank and you have to come to mumbai for the shoot it will be a four day shoot and uh, it was in october so they contacted in december but we had our shoot in october first week uh, october 8 9 10 that's when we were there in mumbai and it was a tremendous experience pitching in front of them and if i may ask to uh, that when was the video recorded the your intro video in university and intro all. video okay it was during november october 31st oh, yeah. and november 1st uh, october 31st and november we had two more shots of uh, university but i don't know because of time constraint they uh, uh, cut it off but uh, we had uh, opportunity to shoot in the university so was it like uh, your pitching was before then after that they shot the video oh yes. wow Yes. yes and so, you i think you were one of those uh, pitches which got the intro video rarely i saw anywhere they got anything that was so amazing that very you true. had got it very true i mean uh, seriously thankful to the uh, university and the administration for providing us uh, uh, permission to shoot within the uh, campus and uh, that was really thankful so it happened so october 10th uh, first week uh, we had our uh, original shoot for the in front of the sharks and uh, they were uh, super impressed so they wanted to shoot a story of us so they came over here it was a two day shoot i can still remember around uh, 1:30 midnight i was sitting in front of in, inside the uh, zakirus in campus giving the Zachary interview it was super chill, super cold but still we were doing it and we had several shots taken and it was a good experience for us and uh, what you seen on shark tank was a 12 minute but actual thing it was almost around one and a half as uh, one and a half to one hour 45 minutes of the entire pitching and they cut it to 10 minutes that you yeah your pitch was like uh, only 10 minutes including the video as well so yeah but but yeah. every pitch goes around one hour 45 minutes one hour to one hour 45 minutes so they trim it and they uh, bring it together and three pitches a day is what their format of till cast yeah and uh, one thing is it really intimidating uh, pitching before them because in the editing process they make it look like <laughs> all the people are sweating <laughs> and it's they're really harsh and all so how is it in real like in pitching in front of them ari vashita you go ahead then i'll join the experience was really good uh, it's not that intimidating but uh, the questions they come up with the way they uh, as a founders what we look at startup is completely different and as investors what they expect from us and what they look at the startup is com- completely different we love our product we have that bonding to our product and we go we take few options blindly in life but uh, they are not in that way right they'll be so straight forward of course the experience was very great uh, but there were few questions where we bothered to uh, and even uh, to answer and all of course at that point of time our accuracy was low to be frank even that's what projected on the tv too uh, but yes it was a good experience the way they evaluate your startup and the way they connect uh, either that was so fun having them and having a you know that was a great 
time one hour 45 minutes yeah. with them sitting they sitting and evaluating startup especially in all terms regarding technology finance and everything so and it's like you know uh, the experienced experience. person is giving gyan to you on screen yeah so many you can take so many feedbacks and just even if some of the, some of the people even they didn't get funding they got so many feedback that they can just apply it then and exactly so for me, for me uh the most uh, favorite part and uh, even watching shark tank and also being on shark tank was walking to the tunnel the tunnel that walk you open do- the doors open and you go walk and straight that was a literally a goosebump moment for me to be honest and i mean like if you can see me on video i'll be a full good i'll be free crowd i'll be walking around and standing there that was a very big moment for us because that's the moment every founder will aspire for uh, who is a fan of shark tank that moment he walks uh, through the tunnel the door opens and you have the enter uh, shark sitting for you just to hear your pitch and what about your product and your problem and how you are solving it that one of the most important uh, thing for every founder and even for me and after that uh, i mean we had a lot of as vashita said we had a lot of lot of questions we had it on uh, how we built it what the technology uh, about the market do we have any other products in the market how are you comparing with it what's the process you are following then how you are going to sell it what's the business model then how we are going to raise funds how we are going to place it how we are going to sell it how we are going to market it there was too much of house to be honest and we were like why 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 for every answer is a why 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 so that's how we have been uh, for almost like one and a half uh, hours we've been telling them and so for us we had piyush anupam we had namita we had ashneer and uh, aman so uh, they were really 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 good such it's not so on the edit you may uh, they may seem little different but to be honest they the shots were literally literally good i mean as a founder i would say they really evaluated the startup very good i mean like it is a bigger opportunity that we got being evaluated evaluated and uh, assessed by bigger sharks who are like they run super big companies not just one two three brands so it was a really really a great opportunity for us and uh, just coming back when you said uh, the product and all one question which i want to ask is uh, so uh, for the audience who are seeing the product which they are specifically went with was a non invasive glucometer like usually when uh, uh you prick your finger and take the blood and test it to check the uh, sugar levels right so these are trying uh, these uh, two are make, trying to make a non invasive where you don't have to prick so uh that in in the clip which uh, they mentioned that you were working on with artificial intelligence and spectroscopy both of this combined so for us can you like uh, uh, explain it how exactly this is happening like it's really complex i guess but can you like try to explain it to us sure um i can't reveal as much if you want to understand more and if you want to work with us you can directly come over to our office and have a chit chat with us but i'll give you a little gist of what we do so you know glucose molecules are uh, optic uh, optical active optically active so what happens is they have a certain window of radiation where they have a excitation range so what we are doing is we are attacking that excitation range and trying to interpret the uh, interactions that excitation are uh, I have, uh, from transit from higher state to lower state this transition we are according to our uh, spectrometric sensor and that uh, data is fed to a algorithm which is based on machine learning where we are trying to predict the concentration of blood glucose within the uh, within the region and moreover we are trying to use uh, we are using a thumb as a uh, point of contact because thumb has a larger surface area you have larger access to uh, surface of uh, blood capillaries and larger time in contact with the blood to be used a uh, thumb as one uh, for, uh, as our point of contact and also a system uh, which is built for thumb so this is the gist so the ai part is it like you mentioned the more number of, of testing you do the more increase so is that ai also playing a role in this exactly so the uh, more number of samples is where we train and make the uh, model the machine model uh, machine learning model more standardized reducing the uh, error and incur- uh, increasing the accuracy and precision and that's why we have been working for the past 3 months uh, on that and we have a little more to do so once that we, we would uh, we are almost reaching a 94 to 95% so when our product is out definitely we'll have a rela- reliable accuracy into the market yeah uh, so uh, is it like any 
a prediction like where at what time you will be releasing this year or next year any goals yeah uh we can't reveal it right now that's okay. <laughs> definitely this year i'm sure most of the people would be interested to know this mainly <laughs> very true i mean we, uh, we have been uh, so after the shark tank release i mean like i mean shark tank telecast uh, so uh, after 10 o'clock we have been completely jammed with for, uh, phone calls many people call, started calling varshita and myself just to tell them the their own pain story their own pain story of themselves freaking or even father freaking their three year old child four year old child and they say that uh, god has cursed them with doing this that's what they explain it because it's very painful for a parent to prick the child's finger and they they really wanted the device and that when we understood okay we are in the right track and we are doing the right thing and we will get it fast tracked and release it in the market soon with a reliable and accurate that's what we are targeting and working on right now and yeah. moreover uh, uh, before it, when we used to meet people and ask them like regarding any question regarding diabetes they would never open up they never used to open up to the questions or something but after telecast of this episode we uh, really thought that uh, how people felt diabetes as a taboo rather than feeling it as a disorder or lifestyle but we are happy now they are at least opening and sharing their own expectations from the product or their own problems regarding the existing product and how they wanted to get treated and all we are so happy that at least at this point of time they started treating it as a lifestyle or disorder rather than treating it as a taboo if i were to ask you like from your idea stage how long did it actually take to build the first prototype like how many years must have gone or like uh, how long was it four months i guess right vimal it's exactly 4 months it was 4 months That, i'll tell you why yeah. i tell you why i tell you the reason why so i said you right so we when washita approached me in 2019 october and we are till march of 2020 before the lockdown we were doing a series of validation so what exactly uh, the validation so i will just off track then come to this so everyone says that startup is a very risky business almost 9 out of 10 startups fail startup founders as we have a lot of money in their hands to be honest we both doesn't have any money at the banks we are empty persons and but still there's a process and that process is understanding your problem in depth so that october november december january february march that six months that we uh, gone through we were sitting with the patients understanding in depth how exactly they are facing the problem because if you understand the problem almost 50% of the product is done so the process is that so when you sit with a person and talk like you are a diabetic how are you feeling uh, uncomfortable using what is naturally so i'll tell you what one uh, insight that we got what we understood and what washita also understood was we thought like okay it's the blood and the pain was a major issue and maybe all people will say this is the problem that's why they don't use a pricking method but later we came to understand after doing a lot of survey and research and start talking to different diabetic patients we understood that it's not the cost i mean it's not the uh, uh, pain or blood or it's not the size of the product it was the cost because each strip cost up to 25 rupees to 40 rupees per strip and doctor advised them to uh, uh, prick it almost 3 to 4 times a day so almost like four strips a day almost costing around 3500 to 5000 rupees a month which is a very serious expense for a middle class indian citizen and, and i will tell you 51% of the indian diabetic people come from a middle income place a middle class family with the lifestyle with the poor diabetes and everything so most of the people come from this and 5000 rupees a month just to monitor not for diagnosis not for tablets not for medicine just to prick and know how much was my level is 5000 rupees an approx uh, cost that they spend on a monthly basis which is not even affordable or not even a reasonable money that people give it over money so that is the reason and we came to know and after talking to this many people so we took just four months to build the pro- uh, product because we validated the poc the poc validation happened in the uh, during the lockdown where uh, we uh, started with a small sensor and we tested it out personally i used to test it out and see how the difference was and it was working and it was good but as a product which shows you the sugar levels we built in 4 months and because we built it in 4 months it's because we understood exactly what problem to tackle that's what the journey is the process that we followed yeah. 
Uh, Varshita, if I may ask, uh, like, uh, so you must have looked for this non-epic uh, technologies, right, before uh, you building it yourself. Were there any uh, players yes. in India or at least in the world? No. That's why I started Seriously? building this for myself. Yes. So, so far I have used AccuCheck, Bayers, I've used Freestyle. I was about to use Dexcom and everything. But I have found... Uh, no non-invasive device. There is no device without pricking. So we have few semi-invasive patches, but they also comes with the needle where I need to wear them for continuously 14 days, which causes me itching and I remove it within seven days by wasting half of my money. So this is how I wanted to start. As you know, myself diabetic, I know half of the problem, how it exactly works. But uh, what I thought was there'll be definitely different perspective because it's not only my problem. There are a lot many people or approximately 537 million diabetic people who are suffering from this. Each and everyone will be having different perspective, right? So if I want some non-invasive glucometer as wearable, someone need it as some independent device. So that's where we took a lot of time, literally eight to 10 months meeting a lot of people, experts, endocrinologists, even a normal people who are suffering from diabetes from tier 2, tier 3, tier 1. So we understood how we wanted to exactly build the product, not in the terms of money or else something, but how can we make the user comfortable? Because user want new product only when they lack the comfort in the existing product. That's when they search for the new solutions. For example, if I have bought something which I like, but what if I don't like it after certain period of time because I'm facing problem due to that? I'll definitely search for new product, right? That's how this idea has come to me because I have used a lot many products which didn't give me much more comfort in terms of cost, especially. So when I initially started using one strip used to cost me 15, but at the time when I was pursuing my 10th standard, it literally became 40 rupees. I myself was wasting 4,000 to 5,000 on my glucose monitoring. There was a point where I stopped monitoring my blood glucose levels because I don't want to waste this much money. So that's where I thought of why can't we find a solution? Being a science graduate, what will you do after your graduation? At least you can use your knowledge right now, right? So that's what the moment when I thought, okay, let me try something. I'll do research and I'll go to an engineer to get the product. That's where I met. As I told you, I'll never be in class. So I used to go to uh, hackathons, competitions and all. That's where I met Vimal. So I found him that uh, he would be a perfect suitable person for this because his main goal is also to, to make people's lives better. You know, rather than doing and sitting a nine to five job, he preferred doing that. So that's where we both met and we started building this. So uh, you guys started the company like uh, in university in the incubator or like you start company then use the facilities or how was it? We came over here in December and we got it incorporated uh, in April. So we came it came into Hyderabad, came to university, then we uh, incorporated our company. So we have the idea ready. We have the funding ready. All we need is some space and mentorship. That's where we came here. Okay, uh, and uh, like we were looking through it, but uh, all of as you mentioned, they were all in research stage, and uh, many were mentioning that like non-invasive technology is been in research, but there were no breakthroughs. So what is happening? Like why is that there is no breakthrough happening? Is it difficult or how is it? Like one definitely the acceptance of the user. For example, uh, what if I'm launching the Apple Watch, which is non-invasive, but I tell the user that you need to buy an Apple iPhone to use the Apple Watch. They'll never buy because one, the cost barrier. And the second thing, the technology barriers. Instead of using the visible light or NIR, what if I use radio frequency, even though the radio frequency is efficient, but the concern we have about radio frequencies you know, like uh, creating free radicals in the body and causing cancer. We don't use, right? So if you want to put all this together, the technology and cost together, it will be very difficult for a person to make something. So that's where we stand. We design our own sensors. We assembly our own uh, things. So input that's how short, we reduce the cost. So input it short, I would, uh, so research has been going on. So there were uh, larger research articles 
uh, papers published over the internet. Now, most of them, they were using a range <coughs> of uh, middle infrared or far infrared or uh, other uh, certain uh, radiations. But those radiations are run compliant with the medical uh, terms. Though they have an accuracy, they, they can predict the glucose molecules, but they cannot be used as a commercial product because of certain uh, restrictions for the medical thing. For example, the DEFCOM G6 sensor, which is very famous in the US, which is a patch that they take in for glucose monitoring, is not uh, approved in India because of certain restrictions. So every country has a certain restriction, that's one. And second thing, even though the science can uh, break through uh, technology, or a finding that cannot be commercialized because there will be increase in cost or there can be a, a non-usability or you need some other product to be used along with it that will be a little uh, costly so there's very larger difference uh, scientific uh, breakthrough and a commercialization of, of a product so that's what we try to so she Vashita came from a biotech background she's from a science background i come from an engineering background where i have a product building and a product uh, experience. So that's where how we collaborated together and we built a, a device that is scientifically possible, scientifically feasible, reliable, and also as a product, it is easily commercial. So uh, you're saying that even if there's a product, let's say in US, I can't order it and use it because it has to be approved. True. Okay. Very true. So that's where you guys come yes. in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and no. even even we are trying to go out also. We will also take an FDA approval. And we, uh, we are planning to go abroad also. Yeah. So uh, you, you are from engineering. Uh, yeah. yeah, obviously India first because we want to serve okay. nation builders. <laughs> uh, but uh, the because thing is, you are from engineering and uh, Varshita, you are from uh, pure sense, right? Uh, Biotechnology. Yes. So, uh, like, have you guys seen this trend? Uh, like, are STEM students coming into the picture or is it still less? Um, okay, I think uh, uh, I will go first, then Vashita will share her experience. And uh, so, since I was working in early startup, I mean, the startup accelerator itself. So, what I find was like students know technology, they understand technology, they learn technology. For example, it can be AI, it can be data science, it can be, uh, don't uh, get scared because I come from engineering background, so I say oh, all these terms. They know IoT, what is IoT. They know all this technology, but what happens is they try to build the uh, solution with their known technology and try to fit a problem to it. For example, I'll tell you, uh, last year, one of my uh, juniors from a college approached me and said, like, uh, they want to build a device that they can turn it on or off, a device they can turn it on or off with a mobile phone app. I asked, why did you build it? He said, uh, I learned IoT uh, recently. So I, I built a SAM, I thought how to utilize it. I thought this is the best idea. Uh, so they used. So I asked two questions. Two questions. So one was like, uh, where's the gran uh, grandfather or grandmother? He said uh, he is in the village. Do they have a smartphone? No. So do they have access to internet? No. The, the problem that he says is true. It is difficult for an old age person to uh, go from one place to another. For example, let's take a scenario where you're in a uh, village where you have a farm uh, two or three kilometers away, but you have to turn off your motor, but it is dark and you don't want to travel at all. So by a phone call or, or by some solution, you can turn the motor off from your home. That's a problem, understood. But the way you approach the problem is very different. Where that guy is there, he knows a technology and he retrofitted a problem. Instead, go and talk to your grandpa itself. Ask him what you use. You, he uses a normal keypad phone, right? Then, but you want to solve it. So uh, that's where the process differs. Building a technology, then retrofitting a problem. Instead, going and talking to the person and understanding the problem more, you will get a better solution that is more feasible and at less cost and easily accepted by everyone. So what I said, there's something called DTMF. Or uh, in simple words, we, you know this IVR thing, where you for recharge and all, you used to press one, two, three, two, uh, activate few options, right? So similar thing. At a low cost, you can do it for a uh, turning on or off uh, of a device. If you press on, it will on. If you press uh, zero, it will off. So you can uh, uh, calibrate however you want. Not at all. No need of internet. No need of smartphone. No need of any other technology. Just a simple system, a simple solution that you fit to your motor. And by ringing to a certain number and pressing one, automatically the motor starts. Pressing two, the motor stops. That's all. The problem is solved. But how we approach the problem? So. I'll, I'll tell you simple. 
no customer or a user really wants to know what the technology is behind it they is he wants his pain to be solved his problem to be solved simple and it's our founders to understand the problem and to find out a feasible solution so this is what instead of using a, a iot app and all this thing a simple phone number ringing into any press one to start and two to off matter solved and solution is built so students uh, nowadays are trying to solve problems i mean try to build products but the process they which they follow is different that's first thing and second thing i have seen like startup being a new buzz across for example uh 2020 before 2021 we had around 37 unicorns but just only in 2021 we had 43 uh, unicorns basically uh, uh, more than that so automatically it has doubled in one year so this is how the ratio is going it has been a trending word but how the uh, process or how the uh, students take startup pass is not i mean like we usually say startup is not a replacement of your placement startup is never a replacement for your uh, placement startup is more risky than your placement for play- placement will give you a 9 to 5 job it give you a decent salary but what you learn out of a startup grow to a startup going to the uh, road blocks going to the roller coaster is something a different kind of a learning and lot to experience and learn and you have to have, take a lot more risk but i'll tell you it's really really a very enjoyable fun and uh, happy journey that you can take as an entrepreneur it's really really good and i see start uh, students coming up now but i would advise them that change the product understand the problem first then build the product instead of building a product and uh, adapting to a technology or a problem that's what science students usually do uh, so the difference between the engineering students and science student the pure science is like engineering students always definitely follow the system of procedures as same as doctors so what we do science students is we experiment lot of things so if we came to find some problem the first thing we do is why did we have this problem the first question we ask why haven't anyone solved so it's still problem right why that's what we usually think but the difference uh, with engineers is they'll think how initially they'll start how to solve it not they don't dig and go deep to understand the problem well so in that perspective we are very lucky that uh, we dig deeper we understand the root of the problem we understand the root cause so that we will easily build solution that's what one advantage we have you know uh, just imagine dumping lot of research paper to vimal he could never figure out what the solution is but what if i say this is the exact problem and this is what we going to work then he figures out how it exactly work so that's what happened with us of course uh, coming from different backgrounds is a definitely a very good thing we interchanged our skills a lot i have learned few more things from vimal and he have learned how to exactly look at a problem from my side you know being a science student of course people say you're from science background you need to only limit yourself to certain kind of things never who told like you know before joining biotechnology i got i got selected for my ai triple i got selected for my iit je everything but i left everything behind i wanted to pursue this biotechnology because i wanted to make my dreams come true that's how it works uh, but i have seen lot of people commenting that uh, science students they won't be able to do anything they are only limited to research never if you are limited to research for yourself then you can conquer the world you know research is the toughest thing to do than solving the problems so uh, what i would like to say is uh, you know use your research wisely use your research to solve problems than publishing a paper or giving an article to the public you know that's how i used this to solve my problem my dream is to always work with the cancer biology so uh, my dream is to work with cancer related and to solve the problem each and every problem related to cancer that's why the main reason i took biotechnology of course then comes the diabetes so uh, use your research to solve your problems not to publish something or limit yourself to the jobs you wanted to my first job was in dr reddy's of course i was uh, you know selected as research assistant in the, my campus interviews but i never limited myself if i could have limited myself for that placement i would have been an employee for reddy's but now uh, we have the ceo who is heading the pharmaceuticals in dr reddy's as our uh, board of advisor 
we have grown a lot from being a student to being here so never limit yourself you know keep experimenting on things keep learning the first thing as a student you wanted to do is keep learning you are never too old to learn keep especially keep yes keep learn experiment learn experiment learn and learn then learn I, learn experiment fail and learn then learn again so i mean that's yes. a simple point and that's as an how... engineer, i would seriously uh, agree to what vasita said with the output of the research that comes in almost 50% of the product is done the remaining uh, 50% is just an engineer who is coming to trying to replicate what the uh, process is into a feasible uh, method and a feasible process and the commercialization levels that's all i mean most of the work 50% is already done it's just uh, so all the uh, science background the researchers are, who is who has connected today you are already building products and solutions it's just to think out of the box how you can commercialize it and how you can turn into commercial uh, commercial that's it you are already started on this you're solving it and uh, you mentioned learning right so but uh, being from science and engineering we don't usually learn about finances or business management unless you guys like you are joining mba you will learn about it so what if let's say you didn't do mba or not yet done mba how how difficult is it learn to learn these things okay uh, i would love to start definitely yeah. so i was the one who was irritated with numbers okay i hate numbers first of all i'll never look at numbers if you give me problem i can solve within the time limit and get back to you that's it if you ask me numbers i'll be in the mute mode always so now uh, i've i never did mba before starting my own startup right i did my graduation as ramakrishna sir told i just graduated came out of university and i called him like we need the space we have a grant we are solving this particular problem that's what happened okay but you know startup is a journey it's a journey where you learn each and everything for example vimal doesn't even know what exactly research look like he never knew okay he know about research papers but he never knew what's the process inside the research and me i know the excel sheet for the basic calculation but i never know how to put a one year or two year financial projections this is what startup teach you this is what your 9 to 5 job doesn't teach you so in your 9 to 5 job whatever you learned within the 3 years of lifetime you will apply it reapply it reapply it that's it you will never relearn anything so this is what you do in do in startup like you learn new stuff for example uh, there were lot of situations where vimal was absent when i need him most in the terms of numbers so what can i do i sit myself i learn i have put numbers trust me now i project financials very better than vimal very true i mean <laughs> so, like i would say like yeah. startup journey is a learning journey every day you have a challenge so morning when you open your eyes you have a challenge and when you finish the day i make sure that those challenges are solved or at least 50% solved because that's how the uh, journey of every day every day that's how we take it and in terms of learning for example i would say the biggest learning i have learned is about the legal regulations that we have in india i had no idea to be honest i had no idea of what a company registration happens what is a dsc what is a incorporation what is a moa what is aoa what is roc uh, what is tan what is a uh, a pan i know what is tan then how come gst comes in how gst happens and what are what are the regulations that we have in business running how we have to file the compliances i mean i literally had no clue because i haven't run a company but now i can say where exactly what happens because i learned through the process i mean like every day what i'm uh, uh, i'm learning new stuff i'm experimenting new stuff and i would say that this journey of the startup uh, i would say it's great more than an mba Because you are experimenting and trying it out every day. Yeah, always. We don't say MBA doesn't teach you yeah. all this. Yeah. So MBA you know, you, I I still bung my MBA you. classes. <laughs> I still bung my <laughs> MBA classes. You know, I enjoy being on field and working on my own startup than listening to my MBA classes and all. So that's what every so day MBA, you co- people come up with new challenges. Uh, you need you definitely need to learn at least. 70% of the stuff people think that ceo is the one who sits and signs the checks and give it to someone but no he is the one who at least know 80% how company works from a to z from the product Maybe manufacturing to logistics uh, and by that time chief everything officer ceo can be 
chief everything officer to be very chief everything officer nice i will say i have been a cleaner boy to a water boy to a ceo and a thing here <laughs> similarly in the sabashita so it's all about how you engage inside uh, during the journey and process so mba is basically uh, validated science and topics and theories which have been proven so uh, long in the past years that acts as a base to uh, what you can experiment further <coughs> so that's what uh, startup journey also so everyone who says uh, to start a startup you need a mba degree uh, maybe uh, partially right because people who do not have an uh, understanding of how a business work maybe mba can take up and they can do it other than that if they have already have seen a journey of a how a start- product or a startup is built they can directly learn through the journey of building their own startup and solving things yeah and as you said even in the show if you see they calculate on their hands all the numbers all the equity how much they should go ahead with that so that also relates my question which is uh, in the in, you went with a certain ask for your uh, this uh, 56 lakh but you got a return which was uh, uh, counter offer was 33 percentage right how did you in that moment decide that okay now i i will be going with this deal and i don't want to miss it so what was the thought behind it okay so i i mean like after their offer we almost had a uh, 20 30 minutes which was uh, actually cut uh, no? we had a lot of discussion we i and washita discuss it better so piyush and uh, anupam they are really really well experienced persons especially uh, piyush runs a d2c brand uh, globally lenskart one of the very famous and very great company in terms of the problem they solve how they manufacture it how they uh, pro- give out products with so reliability and uh, quality and moreover reaching to the lowest of tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh, so they have a bigger uh, uh, distribution network access to market and a bigger plus anupam he has the best of connects everywhere he has almost invested 100 plus uh, startup he has been a better uh, shark among the everyone and we found that those two deals i mean those sharks who have provided us a deal to be uh, beneficial for us in the long run also because uh, actually to be honest we went in for shark tank not for money but for sharks so our requirement was not money we want people i mean as you said skin in the game we want a better shark skin in the game so that we are uh, building more uh, scalable product uh, for the future were you hoping for namita to come in uh, uh, yes actually, uh, we, we were literally honest uh, they want aman and uh, uh, amita on board on board but we got the other two sides here <laughs> yeah other two sides so yeah so uh, in namita's perspective uh, namita knows very well that the medical products and pharmaceutical related products will definitely take time and mm. she is not her expertise at this point of time maybe so that's why she is out and we got piyush and uh, anupam on board lucky so what we expected was aman having a better uh, in in the uh, consumer electronics where we also are part of a self care diagnostic device medical device where that reaches every home as both reaches every home and every neck mm-hmm. that's one and aman uh, so that aman and uh, namita with her uh, medical expertise we thought that those two shots uh, together would have be a better deal but still we had a better option with piyush and anupam yeah even piyush was he himself was in, investing in a lot of technology based companies so yes yeah it how was the experience uh, like it's been like 3 months i guess or 1 uh, 2 months uh, like how was it like in interacting with them in general um so piyush to be honest uh, he has been a great person and uh, we have been going through the due diligence process and uh, all this as a bigger big process after the deal that's called due diligence where we have a uh, several uh, talks we have several uh, paperwork that has to be done which is currently going on and we have been talking with pius and pius has been a great so far with his uh, aspiration of how we can transform just from this stage to a better stage and growing up and uh, it's been great and we had a couple of mails from anupam also which has been very 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 motivating and we see a good foreseeable future yeah uh, and uh, uh... also going little back uh, like how does one decide that this is the point where i should raise funds either by taking debt or taking or by diluting equity like how even like for your uh, company you were in still in research stage but we've seen that in chartang most of the companies which had revenue and even sharks would then themselves prefer to 
So how does one decide that? Okay, now this is the point I would like to go ahead and start. Yeah. So a startup decides where, when they want to fundraise is when uh, their previous uh, money in the bank starts burning out. So they would predict a timeline. So th there's something called uh, monthly cash burn. If you have gone to Shark Tank or other US Shark Tanks, they would have, they would define a term as monthly cash burn. Basically, how much money are you burning every month? So that that will be your uh, time period of run of your startup. So you will exactly know. Okay, in next three months, my entire money will be burned, and I have no money to uh, pay my uh, employees or do my research or start my building of my product or development of it. So that's when you understand. So is it six months before or three months before? It's up to co-founders strength and uh, I would say guts to decide on that. But that's the uh, measure that they take. So basically, uh, investment is needed to run the company and extend the company's lifetime. And uh, it depends on how much money you need, what type of objectives and milestones that you have for the next one year, 18 months. And then you raise an investment and you take it forward. For example, let's take our startup only. Our initial investment was zero. And then uh, during the ideation stage, you doesn't require uh, any investment to be frank. So what you do is you do the basic research, start meeting people, getting expertise and all. But once you started, you crossed your ideation stage, uh, you'll uh, now need to build a uh, like very basic prototype. So that's when you require the minimal amount of funds. That's when initially we started raising 7.5 lakh. Uh, but uh, we know that uh, we can only work with this 7.5 lakh only for 12 months or else 11 to 12 months. That's it. So during our eighth month, we started searching for fundraising once again, because uh, we know within the four months of time, we're going to run away of funding. So we have been invested into research and development, manpower, uh, product development and whatnot, travel and all. So that's when we started raising for one more 40 lakhs. So that's how initially people will start raising. No matter if you have the revenue also, a startup or a company always want the funds in bank to put in rotation mode because uh, you can't so always it. rely on the complete rotation cycle. So they can, so that if they have few more amount in their bank, they can manage their inventory, their operational costs, their day-to-day -day operations, expenses and all. That's why they go to fundraising no matter what. Uh, Zomato, uh, Zomato is a unicorn, right? I mean, of course. So they still raise money because they need, no matter how much profit revenue they get, they still need to cover up their debt by promoting much and getting revenue much. And they still need to balance their day-to-day -day expenses. That's how funding works. Your moreover, runaway... Yeah. Or else, your, say, yes. Uh, body funding that we have received is from the government of India. So it's been oh, from, uh, supported and, uh, and supported and motivated from the uh, funding... Uh, schemes that have been put forth by the government of India under the Startup India schemes. Yeah, even as you mentioned, like even like right now we see all the funding which happening in the show was like in lakhs only, but we see investments of like uh, some uh, companies, venture capitalists putting in thousands of thousands of crores even for bigger companies. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I would like to ask like, but you guys are doing your academics and also this handling and you also have to keep on learning and also planning is also a huge thing, right? So how do you guys manage time? That's like the most important question. I would so, say, uh, if you are seeing my English, what I, uh, what I believe in is uh, I work between uh, opening my eyes and closing my eyes. That's it. That's what we do. Just op so open your eyes, we start working and close. And end of the day, when we close our eyes, it's a close of the day. It may extend even 28 hours, 29 hours, it doesn't matter. You know, we even we used to have calls like I used to all of a sudden get up at the 4 a.m. and I used to call Vimal. Vimal, we need to submit it tomorrow. Come, let's join through a Google Meet now. So there were days we used to work, you know, late nights and all. But uh, you will definitely get used to it. At last, you will feel the satisfaction, you know, that satisfaction you need at uh, end of the day. That's what important. I mean, it's not I've how much time for, you have yeah. I have been working in a 9 to 5 job and all, but... This amount of satisfaction every day I get before I go to sleep is very immense when I am working here as a startup founder. Recently, we have been gone for Pongal to our homes, right? We had a discussion regarding like, I used to sleep very well after, you know, working hours from the office. Now I couldn't able to sleep in home because I haven't did any work today. So uh, we really feel that working is like, you know, we got very used. It became our day-to-day -day lifestyle for us. 
so that's how it works you will get definitely used to managing timings and all would that be a like a, like a dark side of entrepreneurship that you get very less time like to enjoy or something like that uh, no because you are enjoying uh, it daily i'll yeah. tell you what uh, you know where am i right now can you guess i'm in ikea sitting and working so yeah that's what make you you know the most enjoyable part about entrepreneurship is go and sit and work wherever you want that's what we love you know we day uh, like we find new cafes we put a target okay if i'm working five days in the office the next two days will be some other around people sitting together you know meeting lot of people working around cafes going out and working the workation and all so we literally enjoy this a lot uh, rather than you know chilling out with friends and all so we never yeah, felt don't this take was a dark that side. we also take yeah we also take breaks we also chill out with friends we have hang out and all but this is our routine that's it yeah prateek uh, uh, so we are running out of time so it's only yes, 7 so final few so, questions which yeah, yeah. Like. so we will allow any questions from uh, uh, participants sure. students so i hope that uh, at least uh, uh, a dozen of students got excited after hearing these stories so let's see how many you people will come forward to start your uh, i mean ideas into Okay, so there are a couple of questions in the sir, uh, box. So, yeah, yes, can sir. a mathematics graduate or postgraduate become an entrepreneur? Why not? Anyone can become an entrepreneur. So there is no any limitations, restrictions to anyone. Even an uneducated yeah. person also that can he can start if he has an wonderful idea. So there is no any. In fact, mathematics mathematicians have always yeah, solutions for problems. So I hope I believe. so they will be the better uh, entrepreneurs <laughs> than anyone i mean uh, mathematicians are the real backbone behind every entrepreneur every startup uh, thing it, it's simple it's uh, just because uh, every day we face problems it's just uh, how you see problems and take those problems as your uh, problem statement and start, start working on one small example licious founders they usually go to a butcher shop take some meat but we also go there but we never recognize that the smelly unhygienic and the situation around be uh unhygienic but those licious founders found it to be a problem said that they took it as a problem built a solution to it now they are a bigger company in the name of licious so that's how this it's how you see problems and take it as a challenge to solve it and anyone in this world can take up a problem build a solution on it and experiment and become a startup founder you can be an entrepreneur also Yeah. So there is you one know, more question in the chat box. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so how town yes, people sir, can you reach can. your startup? So uh, yeah, you can answer that one. Yeah, Gauri, can you just uh, elaborate on it if you can uh, mute? How town people can reach your startup? That's what, sir. Uh, Gauri, can you unmute? Yeah, Mr. Aklesh. Okay, uh, Gauri, sir? Mr. Aklesh. Yeah, can you? Yeah, what was your question? as a how i can uh, um reach your startup company so reach in terms of what like a contact yeah yeah so our office is inside the university yeah uh, in, it's inside the campus it's in the science block or you can definitely uh get our contacts or if you want to you can uh, directly approach us on our contact numbers on our website you can have a talk and discuss thank you and uh, difference between computer science and computer science engineering okay uh, we are not uh, educators or we are not uh, educationalist but uh, there's a lot of difference uh, the thing is uh, computer science so i will tell you science and engineering that's one thin line of difference uh, engineering comes into applications of what science have uh, discovered and uh, identified simple as that so science you go very deep into a concept Uh, theories and uh, engineering uh, works on those theories and the applications of it. That's it. So okay, students. So, so you people can reach. Uh, I mean, the uh, two guys uh, we, uh, uh, in Viva Life at any time. So whenever you want, you go and go and visit their uh, startup, uh, which is incubated at Tide. Uh, Tide is located at Science Complex. Uh, on the first. Old Science Complex. Yeah, Science Complex. So okay. and uh, so soon after uh, uh, resuming i mean after this pandemic time so 
we request all students you people come and visit our facilities and you interact with the other startups at uh, three different uh, incubation centers and uh, so I, we believe and we hope at least uh, a dozen of student startups this year uh, so will uh, i mean they will incubate at uh, uh, incubation centers of aspire yes. okay i also i would like to add up so uh, anyone who has a problem and willing to solve or has an idea to solve it uh, you can definitely reach out to ramakrishnan sir uh, uh, so that he will guide you accordingly and any uh, members of the uh, aspire community Uh, you have experts and mentors who will guide you properly, uh, and in, they will support you in terms of converting your idea, your solution into a better prototype and a kickstarting your startup. I mean, Aspire is a very good launch pad for you. So do utilize, and we have it inside the university. That's a very good thing. And one more thing I would like to add is like uh, the question. So someone asked, can a mathematical graduate can become an entrepreneur? Right? Entrepreneurship never require resume. and uh, it's never option for your placement so all you need is a problem and an impactful solution that you can provide to your uh, customers that's it it never requires a resume so don't worry no matter from which background you are you can always solve problems and you know get into entrepreneurship so i think it is a very exhaustive yes webinar uh, and exhaustive interview Uh, this is much more challenging than the uh, pitch that you have made uh, <laughs> the investors <laughs> i think is really good in uh, coming up with a lot of questions and, uh, i think uh, probably the you both have excited uh, many of the students uh, and university has uh, 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 given the places for the startups so uh, Uh, starting from pre-incubation stage uh, for the students, I think uh, you have to utilize this opportunity. And uh, more so, the computer science students. If somebody was asking them, uh, in fact, they don't require much of laboratory or infrastructure. And uh, more companies should come from the computer science students. and uh, if you go to any engineering colleges most of the startups are while they are studying in the first or second year itself they are starting the companies why not our students uh, you know now with a much uh, better background uh, and uh, knowledge than uh, engineering students um, uh, in fact we have uh, three or four branches of computer sciences in the campus um, and uh, i'm sure certainly they can start their own ventures um, and uh, in all the disciplines um, whether it is physics chemistry biology or uh, mathematics uh, social sciences humanities they all could uh, come up with innovative ideas university innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem is there to support you all and i invite you all to visit uh, the incubation centers interact with ramkrishna and anil uh, and uh, they are uh, uh ready to help you in whatever way you like and there are many mentors also either in any discipline that you can think of um, for uh, your ventures and so i wish uh, vimal and uh, varshita all the best thank you so much uh, and have you given equity to university of hyderabad uh No, 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 not it. <laughs> I think you no. have to give some. You, I, I think you. They should, uh, yeah, they the should be generous. Course. They should be yeah, very yeah. generous towards okay. university. Uh, so you decide yourself. Uh, okay, <laughs> no compulsion. So. Uh, okay. Okay. We're okay. just kidding. So, so we should all fund the them. So we should all. Uh, Pratik, uh, I have yes, one sir. more request to you. So on twenty fourth, uh, we have uh, a talk uh, from uh, I mean uh, uh, a startup uh, in the innovation cafe. Okay. So yes, sir. Uh, because of COVID reason, so we are doing it in a hybrid mode. Otherwise, uh, you all people uh, can join uh, physically also. Uh, so just circulate among your uh, I mean students. So yes. provider. Okay. So those who are in the campus, you uh, know, they could always come and yeah. join this one. and before we close i just wanted to all of you might have been wondering what is this fab fab academy 
So I didn't tell anything about it. This is a non-profit organization which we started in 2004, uh, providing a platform for academy, industry, and government uh, to come together, interact, and other thing. In 2020, we launched the FABA Academy. FABA Academy is mainly to help the students in career guidance and skill development activities. Many of the students know they lack the right skills required in the industry. When they go to the industry, they say, no, 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 you don't have practical skills, things like that. So that's where uh, Papa Academy has stepped in and then coming up with various programs and uh, soft skills as well as hard skills that are required. And many of the programs are already there. And if you visit the FABA website, you could uh, always see the various webinars and, and contra uh, workshops that we have conducted. The videos also will be available on YouTube. You could always see what we have done so far. Uh, and uh, they will be really educative. I think uh, uh, we will do one on the innovation and entrepreneurship activities also. It is not only just for the students in India, but all over Asia. So students from various Asian countries also join. And Ramkrishna probably can give the talk on innovation and entrepreneurship, followed by you know, Vimal and Varshita's interview. The same we will replicate over the FABA platform so that uh, uh, larger uh, students uh, will get the benefit. Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. all the best. Yeah. Anything uh, you could, uh, if you want to still discuss, you can discuss. Sir, yeah. I would, uh, if there are no questions uh, from the chat or anything, then I would like to like conclude with vote of thanks okay. uh, because we've already spent like two hours. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, sir. <laughs> so, on the beha behalf of Junior Science Club, uh, I would like to extend a very hearty uh, thanks to all of our speakers and also uh, to the founders uh, of uh, Viva Life. And uh, like, uh, this has been a very impressive thing and we've always wanted to do it. Junior Science Club usually does only purely science-based talks. This is something we uh, tried out for the first time and we wish that more of the science students also go into this entrepreneurship and uh, improve the and find solutions for the problems which we face. And also, I would like to thank uh, the faculty coordinators of Junior Science Club, uh, Dr. Rachana Mwarie, uh, Professor Murli Dharan, Dr. Uh, G. Manoj, Dr. Manjari Kiran, and also Dr. S. Ilangovan for their constant uh, presence, guidance, and valuable encouragement. And at last, uh, a huge thanks to CIS office members and uh, Aspire uh, for uh, collaborating with this and uh, making this session happen. And uh, also, we also thank our uh, director of CIS for giving this opportunity. Thank you so much for making this event so successful. Thank you. And we wish you a very safe weekend. Enjoy your day. Thank you. OK, Bye. all the best. Thank you so much yeah. for getting Thank us. You, Thank you so much. Bye bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pratik. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. bye. Thank you, Pratik. You did a great job. And uh, hope. Thank you yeah, so much. It was amazing. Yeah. And definitely. Hope uh, you are not nervous to... now, actually. No, I'm not nervous now. I was so happy that you guys were uh, so calm and you were answering questions very easily. <laughs> And also one last question is Pleasure. if anybody wants to work with you guys and help you guys to reach your dreams, how can we approach you and help you? Yes. So I'll, come, uh, come and meet us uh, directly at our office. That's always, we are always welcome. We are always welcome. Yeah. That like come to our so office. Or you will can be also no take science our block. Mail ID. So that's our mail ID. So anyone who wants it, is interested can directly uh, put a drop a mail or directly ring us, call us, WhatsApp us. Or we'll be around anywhere in the university only. Don't do it. Yeah, you can come to student yeah. canteen. You can come to our office. So you can meet us wherever you want. Yes, that's perfect. Because I'm sure there are many enthusiastic students who want to work with a startup. And uh, it would be Definitely. interesting. And also we I are open uh, for interns. So once uh, anyone oh. who's interested uh, can also join. And see where, yes, uh, currently we are work. hiring for, uh, yeah, currently we are hiring for research associates. So I would love to definitely get an in, intern for me, especially for research purpose. So you can always drop me a mail at connectedvivalife.in. We'll go through or else you can definitely meet us in our office directly. 
that would be much more helpful right i think that sums up yeah that was an amazing session i mean it couldn't have been better <laughs> Yes, it's a pleasure, pleasure, and thank you to the U U H community thank also. Thank you so much. Because yeah. I'm new to come, come, come here. U H, I'm really new to last one year, so back one year, and U H has provided us the very best of the community, the nature, the environment, and we love it. And we don't think we would get it anywhere else. That's a lovely community that we have in U H, and thank you so much, and thank you everyone, and thank you, Pratik, you too. Bye bye.